Uh, you well know that the government rolled out um, hemodialysis programs throughout the country in all the 47 counties. And um, also there are a lot of mushrooming of uh, hemodialysis units. Uh, As so of now, we have approximately 159 uh, dialysis units. That is uh, both inclusive of private sector, uh, government, and also uh, mission hospitals. And in all this exercise, peritoneal dialysis was left out. It was not rolled out. And that is why we have a very, very big gap between peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis. Unlike Hong Kong, who are actually uh, going the opposite direction, I think we are going different directions with some of these countries, uh, whereby like in Hong Kong, the PD is done first. And um, actually in this country, more than 70% of patients who are on dialytic kidney replacement therapy have uh, are actually on peritoneal dialysis as a PD first policy since 1985. And they've come up with a model of how PD can be maximally utilized. Uh, if we look at the African view, uh, according to the many studies that have been done, 97% of patients are uh, patients on uh, dialytic kidney replacement therapy and on hemodialysis. Home dialysis first approaches have shown to be a success in countries like Hong Kong, Thailand, and even Mexico, where PD fast programs have been instituted. We also have some countries that have emphasized on home dialysis first strategies, and this includes both home hemodialysis and home peritoneal dialysis. These countries are like Canada, China, Guatemala, India, Mexico, Spain, Taiwan, United States of America. So unlike us here, Kenya, where we are advocating or rather whatever we are up to is making patients remain in hospital. In Thailand, the PD first favored policy was pushed by nephrologists in 2008. Uh, we have a few of us, nephrologists and nephrology nurses, who can actually push the fast favored, and I am sorry for the spelling, fast favored and not fist favored. The organization of peritoneal dialysis program requires time, thought, and careful planning. It's not just something to stand up in the morning and say that today I want this patient on peritoneal dialysis. Recently, we were in a crisis. We don't have fluids in the country. And there's a patient who had no vascular access in one of the private hospitals in the country. And uh, by the time we tried to import goods in uh, Rwanda, the patient died. So you can imagine, we just don't need to wake up in the morning and say, I want the patient on PD. Yet we have no uh, program in place that is careful, carefully planned and thought. So although PD is a simple technique and uh, many people feel that it is primitive and they want to look more like they are uh, having a more technology in terms of mach big machines with a lot of lumps and blood getting out of the system. Uh, it is simple, but it's generally accepted and it is ideally performed in the right setting. So it should not just be performed anywhere. And with appropriate staff and facilities, and once we have integrated renal replacement programs, we are able to actually shift treatment from one, one modality to the other. So if PD is to be successful, again, we can't have PD in a, in a hospital alone. We cannot have afforded to have a, a, a PD center alone. We must integrate with the other modalities of kidney replacement therapy, that is the hemodialysis and transplantation, CRLT and all that. In an in the integrated program, patients can transfer back and forth between therapies with ease. As I have told you, like this particular patient did not have a vascular access. Patient, the patient had been on treatment, 
but all of a sudden there is no vascular access. And because we don't have a PD program active in that hospital, there was no continuity of care because we were not able to shift treatment easily. Doctors, nurses, paramedical staff need to work together to form a cohesive multidisciplinary team. It should not be an issue of Madam Garoya, where is PD, where is the catheter? No, no, no. It should be integrated with the multidisciplinary team. The temptation to open a PD unit without guidelines or experienced personnel should be avoided. It's not a matter of uh, just relying on one person, a partner, you have to come at night, you have to come and set up the dialysis. It should be integrated in whereby any nurse, anytime can be able to start treatment. Managing a patient on PD embraces thorough technical instruction and motivation carried out in proper environment, conducive training. In most PD units, the cornerstone of this approach is invariably the nurse. So it is very, very important to have a preceptor, to have a nurse that is motivated. A PD head nurse should be appointed to spearhead the program. Not that, uh, I mean, any, any Tom, Dick and Harry can be able to, to, to organize. Let there be a nurse that is in charge and is responsible of training, training other nurses training the patients. It is imperative that he or she has a total commitment to the treatment. It should not be that it is coming as a secondary thing or as a, um, it is the end. You know, I have had cases whereby you are given a patient who even has no peritoneum. They are adhesions, they are hot. Let it be a fast treatment so that the person is motivated and the person has a belief in peritoneal dialysis that it works and it can be done at home. Indeed, it should be a philosophy for all PD personnel, including the medical director in that hospital. They should be able to actually understand that the PD program is important and it is like any other kidney replacement therapy is a requirement in every uh, center of, uh, of kidney replacement therapy. The effectiveness of the PD program as a, as a whole should be monitored in terms of how successful it is. Evaluation rates should be done in terms of infection, hospitalization uh, uh, cases, mortality cases, I mean, we should be able to have protocols and procedures to revise these issues. Keeping the multidisciplinary team enthusiastic and creative about the program innovations can ensure that the patients receive the highest standard of dialysis and rehabilitation. It should not just be like, oh, it is uh, just the, the final, 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 final alternative when we can't have any other thing. And by that time, we have no catheters, we have no one even remembering to do the procedures. It should be part of the program. Now I'm going to uh, discuss with you factors contributing to uh, uh, contribute that contribute significantly toward toward reduce. Uh, patient selection for PD and how maybe we shall overcome. One is the high cost of CAPD due to unavailability of the fluids. The fact that there is low utilization, so many companies are not willing to make losses, so they don't bother bringing the fluids. And the few that are there are only bringing, you know, for a few selected cases. And therefore, this makes the cost to be very high. I trust that if we are able to utilize and to make use of the, um, the modality, then we can have the cost going down. The, once you talk to many patients, they don't know, they have not been educated about uh, peritoneal dialysis. They don't look motivated. And uh, there is also low remuneration maybe for nephrologists. For, for example, if a patient is on PD, they are not maybe going to make more money uh, from the, such cases if they have to go home. I mean, uh, the, the, the PD is a treatment that we should even charge in private sector. The, the, the department should make enough money and uh, the doctor should not feel like there is low remuneration for patients on PD. Lack of expertise, experience for catheter insertion, 
and the management of complications. I believe that all nephrologists should be able to fix peritoneal dialysis catheters. Uh, how do we uh, strategize to improve PD uptake? The rapid growth of uh, end-stage kidney disease population in the presence of limited resources highlights the need to have strategies to maximize the use of PD uh, while simultaneously improving cl clinical outcome. So there is need to invest in fluid manufacturing either nationally or regionally. For example, we could have a man manufacturing plant in Kenyatta. Kenyatta Hospital, they used to even make IV fluids. They can be able to make peritoneal dialysis fluids. And this can be a regional uh, plant whereby we can be able to supply within East Africa and improve uptake and cost. Workforce and training is very, very important to ensure that there is coordination of PD programs and increase the use of uh, protocols to design to improve PD outcomes. There are, uh, there are insertion of catheters, treatment of peritonitis and treatment of complications uh, and, 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 and complications. So it's very, very important to have training. Uh, training of uh, nephrology workforce in PD Will increase, uh, will, will increase workforce experience and make PD a more acceptable kidney replacement modality with the improved outcome. PD experience for nephrologists and dialysis centers is critical for a successful PD program. But as long as we are carrying um, uh, out um, uh, a nephrology course, probably in East Africa Kidney Institute, but by the time those nephrologists graduate, Maybe only a few or none can insert a PD catheter or can manage because maybe throughout the training they never had a patient. Uh, county specific PD favored policies and their as, uh, associated background implementation and outcome should be emphasized where we have PD first policy. Uh, PD favored policy. So our main focus does is to educate the public, the policy makers and health workers on the importance of a sustained PD program. Uh, also development of a functional PD team is very, very important for a successful patient outcome. A multidisciplinary approach, as I have said, the essential components include also to integrate hemodialysis, a kidney uh, transplant, and even to have a kidney laboratory. Uh, based on multiple proactive international collaborations and practice sharing. So it's very, very important also to go to other countries and see how are they managing to integrate their services. A successful PD program is dependent on the expert of all, or expertise of all members within the disciplinary team. So it's very, very important not to just pull one group, one group ahead and leave the others. So all members should work in collaboration with the patients and their families to develop patient-centered management plans, goal setting and advanced care planning. The success of a PD program is uh, dependent on development of a robust and effective CKD uh, education program that offers and encourages PD. So it's important that we even start uh, preparing the patient for PD in stage three. It should not be a last solution. A standardized assessment process to identify and triage appropriate patients to PD, transition guidelines designed to support the care and preparation of patients to PD. So this is the multidisciplinary patient-centered support system we must have the patients with us. The patients must have must buy the idea together with the families. All physicians, not only nephrologists, because the person who, who meets the, the, the patient first is that physician. And the first thing they will always say, buy a hemodialysis uh, cadet. So the nurses, the social worker, dietitians, pharmacists, occupational therapy, and even the surgeons, the radio, radiology, uh, the diabetic clinic, community support services. And it's important also to access a timely PD catheter insertion. And that is why the doctors must be ready to insert the catheter. Standardized patient uh, training program incorporating adult learning principles, clinical practice based on current international guidelines. So that is the multidisciplinary approach. 
So peritoneal dialysis team functions, uh, you well know that uh, not all nephrologists have, have the interest of peritoneal dialysis. So we can have a few nephrologists uh, who are specialized in PD, subspecialization. And once a general nephrologist then meets the patient, they can transfer the PD patients to the subspecialized nephrologist in PD. And um, the nephrologist again must work in partnership with the multidisciplinary team. And also there must be a very active pre-dialysis counseling program and also catheter insertion and uh, management among others. The PD nurse is key because again, if you don't have a motivated PD nurse, uh, mostly patients end up with the peritonitis, they are not trained well, they are not followed up well. So the PD nurse has many, many important roles, including that of patient caregiver, educator, and care coordinator. So the PD nurse provides ongoing education and support for patients throughout their program, uh, the, the, their PD journey, and ensures continuity of care between the patient and wider healthcare team in cooperating a case management up uh, the, 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 the PD nurse is an integral uh, person in maintaining relationship also uh, between the patients, between the product vendors, and, uh, and, and, and also other, other multidisciplinary team. So patients often have to rely on a motivated PD nurse. And I must say, for any successful program, we cannot mix things. We must have a PD program that is manned by a PD nurse with an in charge. So we also need the registered dietitians to advise the patients. We need a social worker to help. And also we need the pharmacist, as I have said, the unit coordinator, the clerk, and, 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 and all these people, the counselor. There must be a counselor who is unbiased who is able to give patient education that is likely to increase PD uptake. In most cases, I am not sure whether patients are counseled on all modalities of treatment because you realize that we talk to the patients and they say, no, I've never had. I, I had a patient who came to me and said he had read in the internet. This is a patient who had been on hemodialysis for a long time and only had to read from the internet to learn that there was a different uh, kidney replacement therapy. And therefore we have to have trained counselors and also they must be trained as well on PD. I'm not sure whether the counselors that are counseling the patients are trained on PD. Uh, ongoing training is very, very important to improve patients' outcome. So uh, healthcare clinician training initial and ongoing. It's not only what we have learned in school, it should be ongoing education. And a variety, a variety of education support opportunities are available uh, for the multidisciplinary team. We have local, local training, provincial, national, and even international. There are uh, like ISPD and other organizations that can fund people. Resources to consider are structured training programs, continuing education opportunities, mentorship from senior members of multidisciplinary team. I believe even that a hospital superintendent should be taken to class and understand what is this thing that we are talking about, kidney replacement therapy. And there's a lot of literature and internet resources. Annual conferences like what we are doing, very, very important. But how many administrators are in this conference? Because they are the ones that are the policy makers. Do we involve them? Like we should have a, uh, several hospitals, pretendants and medical officers that are manning those uh, hospitals and a few MCAs in maybe such kind of a conference. So annual conferences, very, very important. And I can say the teamwork is very, very important. This is an example of a, a multidisciplinary team where, but which was um, uh, 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 that, that entailed uh, clinicians, nephrologists, uh, pediatricians, nephrology nurses, and this is a training that was organized by Saving Young Life, where we were shown how actually to insert catheters at the bedside. And so I don't see why we should waste a lot of time making a theater list, waiting for a surgeon, when we can fix the catheters ourselves. 
So policymakers have said that government reimbursement policies are crucial in cost containment, containment of dialysis while ensuring the quality of care without compromising patient care. So we need to encourage the, the policymakers to join us in campaigning to start this uh, PD unit. Also, uh, ensure that the government and healthcare support structured multidisciplinary pre-dialysis education programs and training of healthcare professions to the success of a PD first policy is actually emphasized in the counties so that we are able to succeed to roll out the program. So the administrators are very, very, very important. And also patient support groups there is no way we can succeed if we are not going to bring patients together. Patients, a few of them who have been on peritoneal dialysis, even from other countries, we have Zoom, we have technology, we can bring these patients to talk to our patients and they, they be able to, to have the patient support groups. And uh, some of these uh, are important areas for you to start a PD program. You must have a training area. So all PD programs should have an area that is conducive to learning and free from tra uh, through traffic. The training area should be calm and peaceful, providing the privacy necessary for learning while reducing the risk of cross infection. So you have to have a training area so that you're able to train the patients. Depending on the catchment population, a program may be training two or three patients anytime, at one time. You don't have to train one patient at a go. So uh, some of the teaching sessions will need an individual, some will need group. And also it is desirable that some of the training areas should mimic the condition of a patient at home so that they are not disorientated when they, they are discharged. The, needs, uh, the area needs to be light, airy with ample space for free movement, good artificial lighting, it's very, very, very important. Uh, there should be a resource area with the comfortable seating for the patient where the patients can have uh, use of visual aids, computers and practice equipment should be there. And also um, some patients might be admitted so they will need a self-contained room and the overall area should actually accommodate all the personnel. There should be enough space and also good place for individual training. Uh, uh, there should be a place suitable uh, also for single rooms or, or purpose built PD area for training of outpatient. And also that place should also have a room whereby uh, the, the catheters have been to a very PD, big PD center in Canada. And I was very happy. Catheters are just uh, fixed in the PD unit, the, there is already a procedure room where the catheters are fixed by the nephrologist, not surgeons. Uh, backup, there should be at least a backup in terms of hemodialysis. There should be inpatient beds in case you want to admit the patient. Staffing, or adequate experienced medical and nursing staff 24 hour on call. So there is no way you can start a PD program and then there is shortage of staff because there has to be continuity of care. There has to be training. The patients must be discharged when they already know how to do the dialysis. Full complement of supporting staff. That is including the multidisciplinary team as I have said. Finance. If a PD program is to obtain adequate space, personnel and equipment, it is crucial that the finance to support the program and to allow it to flourish must be there. Little will be achieved if there are no staff, if there are shortages of uh, equipment, inflexibility with the dialysis system, you start a PD unit there, then you are biased in terms of treatment, and then there is inadequate training and follow-up that will not work. So PD can be a revenue producing treatment for those of you who are having <coughs> private hemodialysis centers. You can as well have uh, private peritoneal dialysis centers and create revenue. So uh, therefore PD should not be seen like you, are, you, can, you can make money from hemodialysis centers and you can also make money from the peritoneal dialysis centers. Severe budget restrictions can lead to inadequate patient care and low staff morale in the running of any PD program. Adequate funding for patient population is important. Teaching plan and, man, and manuals 
with the established protocols for continuous education must be advocated for. Equipment, storage area, and home delivery must be advocated for. Uh, these are the rooms that you need. You need um, a unit resource room also, uh, and um, CCPD room, toilets, and nursing office, and the doctor's office. Uh, also clear, clean utility, computer area, and emergency beds and hemodialysis area as well. So this is a PD training room. You can see it, it has um, the teaching boards and it has space even for visual aid and, and even practic practicing using the necessary manuals. And uh, the sink should be there in, um, in the peritoneal dialysis room. You can't stand to have a peritoneal dialysis room with no place for hand wash. And this is one of the PD rooms I, I visited in Canada. And even this is in one of the hospitals in Canada. And uh, you can see that everything is there in terms of hand wash, in terms of the equipment. And um, you can have also a, a PD, like PD ward where you have several patients and you can see the dialysis tables, you can see the space and the, the cleanliness and the, the lighting as we have said. Uh, also APD machines, you should avail a place to stock the, the products. And uh, it is very, very important that, that uh, we need to, to include the, the NHIF to be able to assist us to start PD units. Um, that this, that's some of the, the, the dialysis tables and the beds that you need in a dialysis unit. And also in the training room should also have the, uh, the money kit with an artifi uh, artificial PD, uh, peritoneal uh, membrane and uh, peritoneum in catheter where the patients can practice, where the clinicians can practice how to insert the catheter. Yeah, so uh, these are some of the machines. Nursing care, very, very important. There has to be meticulous observation of the non-touch technique and teaching of the patients. It's a requirement that we use the double bag system which we are using where there is flush before fill. And also hand wash is very, very important. A septic technique is mandatory in making all connections. Follow-up cell is very, very important. Patients must be followed up. There must be a nurse who has to visit the patients at home, if possible, like in South Africa. I saw that was working very well. There is a home visit team. And also sterile technique is required when connecting or disconnecting transfer set to the catheter. The transfer set has to be clamped every time before opening the catheter. Um, uh, um, when we are changing the bags and strict aseptic technique is required when the mini cup is removed. Uh, what are the strategic recommendations that I would comment? I recommend that we continuously improve PD practice because practice makes perfect. Once we don't practice the modality, whenever there is a case, we like almost start from zero in terms of training. So continuously improving PD practice, conduct routine daily clinical meetings, weekly PD discussions, and monthly PD symposiums to measure, identify, and modify performance. PD utilization and clinical outcomes and mobility monitoring should be done. We should work closely with NHIF as well as other insurance companies to support PD patients. Translating PD information in Kiswahili. Probably the patients are not understanding when you tell them uh, uh, peritoneal dialysis, but we can have translations. And I'm hoping one day I'll translate everything to Swahili so that we have books that patients can read in Swahili. Engage the nursing council in addressing the scope of practice for senior nephrology nurses. I think the, the nephrology nurses should not be allowed even to renew their license if they are not having a component of peritoneal dialysis. We should campaign for zero taxation of all this equipment that are imported for peritoneal dialysis. Before a school of nephrology starts, there must be peritoneal dialysis before they are approved to start training. That is my recommendation. I acknowledge uh, ISPD, ISN, 
uh, for funding my fellowship. I really appreciate Professor George Abraham, uh, who is the Professor of Medicine, Pondicherry Institute of Medicine Sciences, Consultant and Director of Nephrology, Madras Medical Mission, Chennai, India, who was my host member. I thank my very own home mentor, Dr. Ahmed Twail, consultant nephrologist, Aga Khan University Hospital, for accepting to be my home mentor in the country. Whenever I need anything to be helped, maybe in terms of what can I do to the PD patients, how can I give better nursing care, how can I be supported, Dr. Ahmed Twail has been there for me. I acknowledge uh, Saving Young Lives for taking us for training in Cape Town, South Africa. I appreciate Professor Mili, Dr. Rajiva Lochama for guidance. And thank you everyone. Those are some of the references I've used that will help you a lot in guidelines and recommendations of how to start a peritoneal dialysis program in your unit. Thank you for listening. Back to you, uh, Dr. Wambogo. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much, Grace. That was, you could hear the passion coming through the talk and uh, you raised very practical challenges today. May I ask you to stop screen sharing so that Dr. Wala can begin to share his screen. Um, there is a question here from Margaret uh, to you, Grace. Um, no, stop screen share is just up there in your screen. It just, yes, thank you. Dr. Allah can start sharing. So Margaret asks uh, or makes rather a comment that dialysis fluid manufacturing is long overdue in Kenya. Uh, what are your comments on this, Grace? And maybe as you answer that, uh, also speak to the erratic supply of PD fluid in the country. Many a time you find patients are having challenges sourcing these fluids. And uh, sometimes hospitals, you know, especially when they're handling AKIs in the pediatric population, uh, are having to make concoctions using 50% dextrose and ringers to try and salvage a situation where supply is hindered. Thank you so much. Uh, the person who has asked, uh, that I said that it is long overdue. I think should you see me, then we meet and see and put our heads together how can we convince the government? Because the government can afford, if they are uh, buying people wheelbarrows, we can also say PD is part of the wheelbarrow program, whereby uh, also they, this uh, disadvantaged people can be helped to come up with a regional manufacturing unit. Because if we can uh, manufacture IV fluids, these uh, PD fluids are just electrolytes with some glucose, and I believe it's all a matter of lobbying, as you have had in Hong Kong. It's the nephrologist that actually pushed the issue of the PD first policy. So I don't know because the issue is the policy makers. The issue is the president. If one of you can come and uh, help us uh, to meet the president and uh, convince the president that people are dying. Because uh, as Dr. Ambogo, you asked, you are talking about. Uh, the, the availability of the fluids. They are not there currently. We don't have peritoneal dialysis fluids in the country. And you can see, I got a patient recently and you see out of just voluntary, I had to organize to import those fluids from Rwanda. But the day the fluids were being actually air, air lifted, the following day, the patient died that night. So I believe this patient, there are so many patients who are dying, leave alone that one case that I'm talking about, just because of lack of integrated uh, kidney replacement therapy services. So it's not a, a, a solution that I can give, but we can put our heads together, led by our very able Kenya Reno uh, Association uh, and also Kenya Nephrology Nurses Association. Thank you.